Anyone's gonna buy it, you can find it for your aunt. Now that the final Noble Knight card has been revealed, we can finally talk about the Noble Knight support that we're getting in Shadow Spectres. I wanted to wait until all the cards were revealed so I can actually give my actual full opinions instead of half assed opinions. It's just the way I wanted to do things. If they didn't reveal the, the, the exact number of Noble Knights, I would have done these as they came out. But since they decided to announce the, all five, and there's going to be a total of five new ones, I just had rather wait. But now they're finally here. And also the OCG imports and the final exclusive for TCG has been revealed. I'll talk about those in another video either tomorrow or Wednesday. Depending on which day I feel like it. Might do some other stuff. But anyway. The five Noble Knights supporter cards. Let's go over them real quick. So we have Lady of the Lake. So I'm loving the. I just love the references here. It's an Aqua Tuner, 200 attack, 1800 defense. Cannot be used as a synchro material monster except for the synchro summon of a warrior type monster. If this card is used for a synchro summon, banish it. When this card is normal summoned, you can target one Noble Knight normal monster in your graveyard. Special summon that target. If this card is in your graveyard, then you can target one level 5 Noble Knight monster you control. Reduce its level by 1, and if you do, special summon this card from your graveyard. So overall, it's a decent tuner. Kind of sucks that you can only go for warrior monsters, but there are of course some monsters such as, you know, their new Noble Knight Synchro. Oh, you can go for x Saber Way. You can go for, um, Mighty Warrior. I'm just giving out examples, you know. I'm not saying you should play Mighty Warrior or anything like that. It's just an example of a level 5 Warrior Synchro that's generic. Overall, it's a pretty decent card. I like the fact that it is a Blizzard effect in a sense, like especially some things like Ultragus. It's sad that the Nova Knights aren't, don't count as normal monsters in the graveyard, but only on the field. So, so they're like a semi-Gemini in a sense. So really, her only target for her normal summon effect is going to be uh, Ultragus. So it kind of makes him still a uh, playable card if you want to use that effect of hers. Uh, she's also, of course, a great card in the graveyard to because you are be playing level five um, noble knight or ignoble knights, such as Lancelin and of course their other level five new level five synchro. Overall, she's a pretty decent card, but I do like the trolls factor that Konami put on her the fact that she's an Aqua and not a warrior, so you can't search her by Rhoda. Good job, Konami. You just trolled every Noble Knight player out there. You're awesome. It's I think it's hilarious. But I love the artwork. It looks pretty cool. Uh, I just I just like, I just love the references. It's freaking awesome. And this is really really nice. So she's gonna be sneaker rare if you didn't know that already. <laughs> and I hate the change of season. My allergies fill her up every time. But anyway, she's a pretty decent card. Next up, we have Noble Knight Boars. If this wants to scroll down, thank you. The level 4 warrior, of course, 1700 attack, 900 defense. This card is treated as a normal monster while face up on the field. While equipped with the Noble Arms equipped spell guard, this card becomes an effect monster with these effects. This card becomes dark and its level is increased by 1. During your main phase, you can reveal 3 Noble Arms cards from your deck. Have your opponent ra randomly add one of them to your hand and send the rest to the graveyard. You can only use this effect once per turn. So it's pretty much set up for things like your exceeds, your both your Ultricus exceeds, to kind of get their effects rolling. It's pretty nice. It's you know it's sort of like your like the Power Tool Dragon, but except Power Tool puts things back and and why is it add playing? Don't play add. Don't play. Anyway, perfect place to pause. But it's a pretty cool card. I like it. Um, it decks your deck by a total of three cards, which is always nice. And again, it sets up for your XC plays. So it does have its um good possibilities. And of course, it creates level by one, just like things like Mudrot. So it opens up rank five XC plays and becomes a dark. So hey, why not? Next up, we have Ignoble Knight of High Lancelin. Guy looks freaking badass as hell. Freaking evil. Level 5 2 level 5 2 <laughs> level 5 synchro 2100 attack 900 defense where it's one tuner plus one or more non tuner noble knight monsters when this card is synchro summoned you can equip one noble arms equipped spell card from your deck to this card at the end of the battle phase if this card destroyed a monster by battle and since the graveyard 
You can add one Noble Knight or Noble Arms card from your deck to your hand. You can only control one Ignoble Knight of High Lancelin on the field at one point in time. So, pretty cool card. It makes Lady Lake even more viable. The fact that you can get a free equip from the deck makes it pretty cool. So you can get a lot, a lot of nice equips, such as your Gallatin to boost them by a thousand. Um, I'm. I'm not going to try to pronounce them their names, so I'll go by their effects. You can get the one that pops spells and traps, because like I said, I'm not going to try to pronounce some of these swords. Like, screw that. Galant is the only one I really know how to pronounce, other than the, the new one, Excalibur. Uh, you can get the one that protects you from, unless it's like once per turn, you can't be destroyed by card effects or by battle, which is also a good one. Uh, you can go for Caliburn if you're playing that. That's another one I can actually pronounce. But, <laughs> pretty good card. And when he is destroyed by battle... As into the graveyard, um, you can add. He's pretty much a roto. You can add a noble knight or noble arms card from your deck to hand. He's a he's a roto in a sense. You know, he's like sort of like a Stratos. He's kind of cool. Uh, it's kind of sexy. He's only by destroyed destroyed by battle. If you destroy by like card effect and or battle, it will make it even more viable, even more not viable. I mean, even more better than he is. But overall, he's a pretty decent card, and it gives you a nice target for Lady to Lake. Now we have Sacred Noble Knight of King Autricus. Pretty cool looking card. He's freaking he's dual building, solar alliance stuff going on here. Been watching that anime. Got like that I know it's awesome. Anyway, rank 5, 2200 attack, 2200 defense. Requires two low five noble knight monsters. When this card is exceed summoned, you can target up to three noble arms equipped spell cards with different names in your graveyard. Equip those targets to this card. Once per turn, you can attach one material from this card, then target one other monster on the field. Destroy that target. If this card on the field is sent to the graveyard, you can target one level four or higher. No bullet monster in your graveyard. Special that target. So, he's essentially a scrap dragon. That's how I'm going to call him. He's a scrap dragon because, you know, he pops a card on the field, and when he's sent to the graveyard, you get summoned a... Low four or higher noble knight monster from your graveyard. Scrap dragon, you get the pop card in the field, and when he sent to the graveyard, of course, by any means necessary, unlike him, you get to summon a scrap monster that's a non synchro. The comparisons are awesome here. So that's kinda what I think of him as. He's a pretty damn good card. The fact that it's really easy to set up your graveyard with noble armor spellers, especially with boars. Um, he's definitely a very good card to have. Especially with the next card, the Excalibur, which can really help get him out as fast as you can. Uh, the fact that he is a sort of a floater is really nice, because it doesn't have to be destroyed by battle. It doesn't have to just be destroyed by card effect. It's when he's destroyed and sent to the graveyard. While he's on the field, you get to summon a level 4 or higher Noble Knight monster from the graveyard, so you can get the nice defense going on with that. It's really, really nice. Now it looks pretty damn cool, too. He's ready for he's ready for war. He's ready for some business. He's ready to take on some dragons. I don't really need to say that's because of night lore. I don't think no one else can really take on dragons all that much. That's my personal opinion. Finally, Noble Arms Excalibur. References are awesome here. Equip only to a Noble Knight monster. It cannot be targeted by an opponent's card effect. During your turn, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one noble knight exceed monster you control, search summon from your extra deck one noble knight exceed monster with a different name by using that target as the exceed material. Of course, the special summon is treated as an exceed summon and blah 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 blah. You can only use the effect once per turn. So, it's pretty much Rank up magic for the Noble Knights. That's how all it is. Pretty good card. Uh, good combination with the other one that prevents destruction and by card effect in battle. Like I said, I'm not going to try to pronounce that name. So, <laughs> it's a really good combination with that. And the fact that it makes the other exceed, the Ultricus, even much more useful. Because you can basically use his Heavy Storm effect. And then you can overlay with Excalibur to go for the Stinkert. Noble Knight. And they use the effect to get back all those Noble Arm equipped spell cards 
and continue with the popping and the wreckage. Overall, there's the fantastic spell card. I can definitely see this thing going to being at played at least two to three because it's a really fantastic card. As for the rest of the Noble Knights, um, the, the Noble Arms cards, I feel like the ones that are really going to be played the most are be Galanton, the one that pops spells and traps. Again, not even going to try to pronounce that crap. <laughs> um, possibly Caliburn if you still wish to. I don't really think that's going to be played all that much. The one that prevents destruction of effect and monster and monster attacks. And then, of course, this one. But overall, I think the new support's pretty awesome. I can't really judge to say if no one... I can't really, I'm not really going to judge and say this is just not going to be tier 1 or this is going to be tier 1 because... There's no telling what's going to happen with these guys. For this format, I don't really think they're going to do anything. But as for the next format... The sky is the limit. We have no idea what's going to happen next format. Uh, but I would suggest maybe if you want to build Nova Knights and you are afraid of a massive price spike, if you're afraid they're going to be like tier 1 next format and stuff like that, try to pick them up as fast as you can. Because like I said, there's no telling what's going to happen next format. I don't really think they're going to do anything this format because, you know, we still have two more months left. We still have November and December. Um of this format so there's no telling what's going to happen next format so anyway I do think this is pretty good support for Nova Knights and I do hope they continue to get more support because I really like the archetype mainly because of the, all the references to King Arthur and the round table and stuff like that the Lady of the Lake, Excalibur, Excalibur, it's really really cool and I'm glad that Konami is actually doing this uh doing you know turned the legend of King Arthur into trading cards I think it's really really cool and I hope they do more sort of lures like that and turn them into uh, into like a training cars part of the car game because I think that would be really really cool. But anyway, what are your thoughts on the Noble Knight stuff in the comments section below? I want to know what you guys think of the Noble Knight support, and you know, do you think they'll get any more support in Legacy or not? You think they're done with them? And so yeah, are you gonna be picking these guys up? Are you gonna be playing Noble Knights because I know Noble Knights are pretty expensive because I know Madron's going like forty five to fifty bucks a piece. Yeah, he's not expensive right now, and he's probably going to go up in price, but are you going to try to build an overnight? Are you going to just say pass, skip them, or collect them every once in a while? You know, what are your thoughts on all of this? So, anyway, comment, rate, subscribe, and bye.